In this tutorial, we're going to enhance the simulated world by building an environment for our character to interact with. To do this, we're going to load in a mesh as a visual reference. We'll then use the Endorphin Environment tools to build the environment around this reference. We'll then introduce a character to the scene and allow him to interact with his environment. So let's begin with a new scene and we'll delete the default character. We can do that simply by left clicking on his name in the timeline and hitting the delete key. Now we want to import the mesh I mentioned earlier to use as a visual reference. We can do that from the file menu by selecting import. We can do it using the button on the toolbar or we can simply hit the I hotkey. Now navigate to the tutorial for creating environments directory which you'll find within your installation directory. Then in the file of types field make sure you have obj file selected and you should see the hall only.obj file and that's the one we want to import. So select that, click open, and the import dialog box will be displayed. In here we can leave all the settings at the default and click OK. And in the viewport you'll see that that OBJ file has been imported. You may need to tumble and zoom a little in order to see the whole thing. In Endorphin, OBJ files are displayed as graphic objects and these are the objects which we use as a template to build the environment around. Now there are two basic types of objects we can use to build the environment in this scene and those are mass objects and collision objects. These grey icons on the main toolbar are mass objects but for the time being we're interested in the blue icons which are collision objects. So now let's create a box collision object by clicking on the box in the main toolbar. In the viewport you can see an orange box has been created. The orange colour simply indicates that it's selected by default. Now we're going to use this box to begin to build the staircase over here on the right hand side. So we want to position this box approximately so it fits the bottom step over here and we're going to use the move, rotate and scale tools to do that. So let's select the move tool, zoom in a little and begin to position this box so it's roughly in the right place at the bottom of the stairs. We can then scale it. Remember that you can double click in the middle of these handles at any point to move between move, rotate and scale. Now I'm going to move into a split full view in the viewport and I can do that either using the icon over here on the right hand side of the toolbar or simply by hitting the V key and then I have a top view, a front view and a left view. I can use these to slightly more accurately position and size this collision object. Notice that whichever of the four split views I'm working in at any given time has a yellow border and this simply means that this is the active section of the viewport. I'm now going to ensure that the perspective section is active by selecting our collision object in that view. You can see that now has a yellow border. So that now when I hit the V key to return to a single view, that view is the perspective view. Now again, make sure that your collision object is selected and use the Control c Control v key combination to copy and paste it. You won't see it just yet because it's positioned exactly over the first collision object. But when we use the move tool, we'll lift it up and move it backwards to represent the second step in the sequence. I'm now going to use the L hotkey to move to left view to get the hide about right. And then the F key just to move it backwards a bit and match it up there in front view. And now I can use the P key to return to perspective view. The various different views available are also accessible through a right click context menu in the viewport and there they are down the bottom. We can now select both of those steps by control left clicking and again use control C, control V to copy and paste and continue to build the staircase in this way. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I can now select all four to build the next four and so on. And I'll do that now and we'll pick things up again when I reach this landing just here. And so now we have the first seven steps built and we want to go on to build this landing area just here. And I can do that in exactly the same way by selecting any one of these steps, copying and pasting it and positioning it and sizing it appropriately. But the problem I have is that when I try to select some of these steps by left clicking, what I actually select is the graphic in the background. Now we can avoid that by going to the view menu selecting node view, the hotkey for that is N, and that will open a hierarchical view of your scene. And Just here you can see the hall only graphic represented that we imported right at the beginning of the tutorial. I'm going to move this node view down 
underneath the property editor where I can dock it just to tidy the screen up a bit and then by clicking on the icon for the foothall only graphic I can turn that visual representation off and now it's very easy to select any one of those steps in the viewport and use control C control V to copy and paste it. I can now return to the node view and turn that graphic visualization back on and use the move tool to begin to position this object to represent the landing using the T hotkey to move to the top view start to scale it so it's approximately about the same size and shape as that landing using P to return to perspective you can spend a bit more time getting this accurate than I'm going to that'll do for now and now again returning to the node view I'm going to turn that whole graphic off and select all of these steps other than the landing again using control C and control V I'm going to copy and paste those in the node view turn the graphic representation back on and use the second set of steps to build the second flight of steps over here move to a top view I'm going to select the rotate tool and spin them round and move them approximately into position returning to the perspective view it's not looking too bad and then you can continue to do exactly the same thing to build the next set of steps here and in fact the landing at the top and I'll pick it up again there so now we have all the steps on the right hand side built we can simply copy and paste again to take these sections over to the left so we'll turn off that graphic again select all the steps for the bottom section control C and control V and turn the graphic back on now I'm going to move to a top view use the move tool to position these and then the rotate tool to swing them round move them back some so we've got the bottom section of steps on the other side move back to a perspective view again turn off the graphic select the landing control C control V graphic back on use the move tool All I have to do is move it straight across move to a top view again because the height is going to be exactly as it was on the other side and I can do exactly the same for this section of steps here copy and pasting its equivalent on the right hand side here so we'll pick things up again once I've built this section of steps so now we have all of the steps and landings built we want to start to create something to represent this arch just here so let's hit the L hotkey to move into left view and ensure that